Aloha. Welcome to A Course in Miracles, Lesson 44. I'm Micah, and thanks for sharing this time with me. It's so such an honor to do this workbook with you. Whoever you are out there, I know you're a part of me, and I'm a part of you. We've been talking about seeing. Not necessarily seeing with our eyes, but this is the kind of seeing that is real seeing. Not the, the Course says that we don't really see. What we think of as seeing is, is called image making, where we project our thoughts outside of ourselves and see ourselves as separate from those thoughts. But the truth is that our thoughts cannot leave um, their source. So if we're the source of the thoughts, they're not outside of us. Just like we cannot leave or be separate from God. And we talked about um, how we created these thoughts and these images to prove that we are right and to prove that God is wrong. So in order to be able to make another choice, we've, we've done such a great job that we're totally convinced that what we've projected outside of ourselves is really outside of ourselves. And it's hard to really doubt that because we believe it. And, it, and our belief is what helps make it real to us. So the Course is, is having us, its goal is that we would see everything differently, to see everything with what it calls the Holy Spirit's vision or the vision of Christ. So in order to do that, we have to first begin to question what we think of as seeing in order to make room for a different way of seeing. So that's what we're doing, and that's the kind of thing we're talking about. And that's where we're headed. And so yesterday we said, God is my strength. Vision is his gift. And then actually yesterday we said, God is my source, and I cannot see apart from him. And today God is the light in which I see. So here we go. Today we are continuing the idea for yesterday, adding another dimension to it. You cannot see in darkness and you cannot make light. You can make darkness and then think you see in it, but light reflects life. And that's basically what we've done. We've made darkness and we think we see in it. But light reflects life and is therefore an aspect of creation. Creation and darkness cannot coexist, but light and life must go together, being but different aspects of creation. So in order to see, you must recognize that light is within, not without. So that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to try to recognize the light that is within us. You do not see outside yourself, nor is the equipment for seeing outside you. So really, we think that our eyes are outside of us, and the whole world out there is outside of us, and that's what we're seeing. And the Course is, is saying that that's just not the case at all. So it's bringing us to a place, at least maybe to question it or look at it differently. An essential part of this equipment is the light that makes seeing possible. And it's talking about the equipment for really seeing. <clears throat> it is with you always making vision possible in every circumstance. So we have the ability to see. It's with us always. 
and it makes true vision possible in every circumstance. And today we are going to attempt to reach that light. For this purpose, we will use a form of exercise which has been suggested before and we will utilize it increasingly and in a particularly difficult form for the untrained or undisciplined mind. Remember, it says that we can't, without a disciplined mind, we can't really accomplish anything. And so that's why this is a mind training course. It's, it's attempting to discipline our mind. So let's see. It is particular. So this type of exercise, which I like to call meditation, is particularly difficult form for the undisciplined mind and represents a major goal of mind training. It requires precisely what the untrained mind lacks. You know, like the untrained mind is can't really focus for very long on one thing. You know, like you've heard of the monkey thoughts, or if you've ever tried to meditate, you know that the more you try to hold your mind still, the more it's jumping from thought to thought. So this training must be accomplished if you are to see. And that's one of the goals of the course is, is bringing us to a place where we can actually see. And we need to do this training. And that's why it's important not just to understand the concepts that we're talking about here, but to actually do the exercises over and over again. And, and you know, if up to this point you haven't been doing them very well, That's okay, because that's a part of it. A part of it is seeing that there's a part of us, which the Course calls the ego, that wants to sabotage this, because it knows that once we begin to really see that that is the end of the ego. So it's not really keen on not being in control of us anymore. So it's going to it's going to be natural for us to miss lessons. We just don't feel guilty about it. Just notice it. Notice it. You know, one part it says the it's going to show us what kind of desire we have for completing these exercises. It's going to show us how much do we really want to see. And we're probably going to find out we don't really want to see that much because we don't really want to give up or let go of our individual separate self, mind-made self, that the Course calls the ego. We don't want to let go of it. But that's okay. We need to see that. But just as best as you can, it's important for the disciplining and the training of the mind to do the exercises as they're said, rather than just reading through it and doing it once a day. I think, oh, I got that concept. Because it's the repetition that is going to bring us to that place where our mind really begins to be trained. Because, like it says here, this training must be be accomplished if you're if you are to see so have at least three practice periods today each lasting three to five minutes and that's really not that much three to five minutes but it's amazing how easy it is to forget that three to five minutes or to not even think about it or or let it go if you do think about it it's just amazing because really there's a deep part of us that doesn't want to see. We want, we want to continue with our separate, individualized person that we've created, you know? 
person I call Micah, and that personality. I don't. It doesn't want to join with the whole. So it says three times, three to five minutes. A longer time is highly recommended, but only if you find the time slipping by with little or no strain. So you really want it to be. You want it to be kind of fun almost. You know, you don't want to be battling it because then you're going to give up. Most probably, most of us will. I know I would. The form of practice we will use today is the most natural and easy one in the world for the trained mind, just as it seems to be the most unnatural and difficult for the untrained mind. Your mind is no longer wholly untrained, though, because you've been doing this course for like 44 days. You are quite ready to learn the form of exercise we will use today, but you may find that you will encounter strong resistance. The reason is very simple. While you practice in this way, you leave behind everything that you now believe and all the thoughts that you have made up. So right there, it tells us why there's such a resistance is because this course is basically helping us to see that we are, that the separation never occurred, that we are still one, that we're still as God created us. And there's a part of us, the ego, that does not want that. It wants to prove that that's not true. So we don't really want to, to this loss of identity or this loss of everything that we've made up. And that's why there's a resistance. So properly speaking, this mind training, this course is a release from hell, yet perceived through the ego's eyes, which is what we've identified with, it is loss of identity and descent into hell. So that's why we resist it, is because the ego knows that the, the truth is that it doesn't exist. But it wants to exist. And there and there's like three parts of us. There's the decision maker, and that's who the Course is talking to, the decision maker. And then there's either we can decide to listen to the voice of the ego, it says, or we can decide to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And our whole life, basically, we have listened to the voice of the ego. And we have, on many levels, liked what we've hear, heard. And we're not, on a deep level, ready to give that up. But at some point, we are ready. Because that we're sitting here taking this course. And that's evidence of it. So that's where the resistance comes from. And so the ego sees this whole thing as we are... It's we're losing our identity, which is the ego, and we're descending into this frightening hell. But actually, the opposite is happening. We are being released from hell. If you can stand aside from the ego by ever so little, you have no difficulty in recognizing that its opposition and its fears are meaningless. You, f you might find it helpful to remind yourself from time to time that to reach light is to escape darkness. So, in other words, we think we're in the light, but we're really in darkness. So if we're trying to reach the light, we are escaping darkness. We are not going deeper into the darkness.
whatever you may believe to the contrary. <clears throat> God is the light in which you and I see. And we are attempting to reach him or her or it. Begin the practice period by repeating today's idea with your eyes open, like we usually do, and close them slowly, repeating the idea several more, more times. Then try to sink into your mind, letting go every kind of interference and intrusion by quietly sinking past them. Remember, this is natural. It's the most natural thing for the trained mind. So just let the mind go there like, like a bird flying and flying. Just let it go. Try to sink into your mind, letting go every kind of interference and intrusion by quietly sinking past them. Your mind cannot be stopped in this unless you choose to stop it. It's merely taking its natural course. Try to observe your passing thoughts without involvement and slip quietly by them. So we're just watching these thoughts. We're not letting them draw us in. We're not judging them. We're not saying that's a good thought. Oh, that's a bad thought. Oh, why am I thinking that? We're just watching, letting go, sinking past them. While no particular approach is advocated for this form of exercise, what is needful is a sense of the importance of what you're doing. It's, it's in estimable value to you and an awareness that you are attempting something very holy. Salvation is your happiest accomplishment. It is also the only one that has any meaning because it is the only one that has any real use to you at all. If resistance rises in any form, pause long enough to repeat today's idea, keeping your ideas closed unless you're aware of fear. In that case, you'll probably find it more reassuring to open your eyes briefly. Try, however, to return to this exercise with eyes closed as soon as possible. If you're doing the exercise correctly, you should experience some sense of relaxation and even a feeling that you are approaching, if not actually entering, into the light. Try to think of light, formless, without limit, as you pass by the thoughts of this world. And do not forget that they cannot hold you to the world unless you give them the power to do so. Throughout the day, repeat the idea often. With your eyes open or closed, it seems better to you at the time. But do not forget, above all, be determined not to forget today. So there you go. Lesson 44, Workbook for Students, the Course in Miracles, God is the light in which I see. Aloha, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Thanks for being with me.